So I started thinking, you know, somebody must have made their own by now, uh, without you know access to a bending brake and all that nice stuff. So I, I looked around a bit. I found one guy who cut up. Uh, if you take in a milk crate, cut all the sides off of it, and then tie them back together. A lot of people said that they used uh, just strips of carpet. You know, just keep a roll of carpet in the bed of the pickup and throw it under the wheels when it gets stuck. Well. My dad's rig got stuck the other day, and we actually had some old carpet, so we tried that, and it just threw the carpet gracefully out the front end, just like mine did with the cardboard. And this is the first one that I made. You can see it's uh, not terribly large, but it's what I could do with the material I had. This is going to be the heart and soul of the project. It's an old bed frame, it's fairly thick. Uh, this is only one side of it, I've already used the other side. Okay, so I've taken my uh, piece of bed frame here, and I stuck it to the plow of the scout with a couple pairs of ice grips. So that won't go anywhere. What I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna get rid of these little rivets here. Uh, these rivets hold the wheels on, hold these little bits on. I'm gonna keep those bits, but I'm not gonna use them on this project. I like this way better anyway. You get a much more precise line. Alright, so all of the uh, mating surfaces are ground, which is going to make welding them a lot easier. Uh, you might notice I ground a little, well, a little less there than I need to, actually, to grind that one a little more. Some of these I've ground more than I need to out. Um, this paint doesn't smell that good when it burns, so I kind of want to avoid that. Anyway, got, yeah, I guess I need to grind further on the ends. I forgot how far those come out. Anyway. I'll get those done up real quick, and then uh, for these, the way I welded them in on this one, don't look at that weld, look at that weld. I beat them like that, and then I gave them a little tack weld underneath here, but I wasn't sure that was going to be enough, so I drilled a hole here to the bottom plate and plug welded it through. That has to be a fairly large hole or the welder will just go, oh, you want me to fill a hole, okay, and then fill the hole for you. Yeah, I don't have a workbench together yet, so this is a table. Sounds familiar. Great, let's do this. I got tacked, three tacks in each corner. It all fit up pretty nicely. This side wanted to be a little askew. So I just put the tack here, bent it with a screwdriver, and then tacked it there. It seems to have done the job. Let's see here if it's askew at all. Seven and a half thereabouts. A little more than three, seven and a half. Close enough.
Okay, so I got the main frame welded up inside and out. Welding everything on both sides is probably overkill, but overkill's underrated and I need to practice. All right, I've got the uh, crossbars mocked up here. Basically just clean edges visible through the middles of the holes. Assuming the holes are roughly correct, there should be space pretty much right. All right, well, the bottom side welding of these uh, middle pieces is done. I think these little plugs turned out quite nicely. The next step for this is to drill holes in it so that it accepts the slats. I'm going to cut those slats out of pallet board. I've got these two already cut. I'm going to pry one of these up and cut it. Anyway, you could use um, stuff other than wood, of course, for this. I was thinking a piece of milk crate might work. You'd have to make it a little narrower, I think, so it would fit. I think you probably just take some rebar scraps. Just sort of, and they wouldn't even have to really go to the end. Yeah, it's too short, but just kind of weld them in there like that. That would probably do the trick. Um, I imagine they're heavier than the wood, but they also won't get snow packed on top of them like the wood might. And you can see I've got these bolts in here. I figured this, especially once it got some snow and ice packed on it, it'll be just about useless for traction. So these bolts ought to do something. Uh, one of the designs I saw was actually they used um, cutting board material, uh, high density polyethylene, I think it was. And they just had a whole bunch of these like half inch bolts just all over it, which basically meant that it was just studded. And also if you ever needed a half inch bolt, you were golden. So here's the finished project, product, uh, both of them, mounted to the roof rack. And I just gotta throw the roof rack back on the truck. Well, I've identified one shortcoming with the design. Um, take it covered in snow up here. Tried to come back up in 2-by and got stuck. I imagine 4-by get me right out, but I want to give my sand ladders another test. Alright. See how this goes. See if I can hold a camera and drive at the same time. Snow ladders are in place. Let's see if that does me the slightest bit of good. Lowering. Ah, 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 yes. It definitely slides still, so gonna have to do a little something about that. All right, so I just did a quick modification to these so they won't fly up from under the truck. I just welded some rebar scraps to the ends. You'll notice they're different rebar scraps. It's just kind of what I had left over. But, 
yeah, I haven't cleaned these up at all or painted them. <laughs> They're still warm, matter of fact. But I need to go plow and it's getting dark. Call that it got me out. So clearly not a uh, substitute for a good set of snow chains, but damn sight better than nothing. This is kind of a fun project. I didn't know. I mean, I figured it would work, but I wasn't sure when I started. And uh, <laughs> the early results were less than encouraging. But yeah, I think I found where these work and how to make them work better. And uh, yeah, I've been able to get the Pathfinder stuck in the driveway since we put the snow tires on it. So I think these are uh, much better suited to the Scout. They've uh, bailed me out a couple of times so far with the Scout. When otherwise I probably would have, I don't know, been throwing stuff under the tires again. These are just really nice to have around, and I'm really happy with them. I think the addition of the rebar is, well, seems to do a whole lot of good. They didn't fling near as much. They still flung a little bit, so I might add some more, or I might add something with a little more bite to it. I was looking at those uh, little bracket things that I took off and thinking I could weld them on sideways. I might still do that. A few things that I would change about my design if I were to make it over again. Uh, I. I wouldn't use the wood, you know, it was just, it seemed like it would be a lot cheaper and easier, and I guess it was cheaper because I had it, but drilling all of those holes in the metal was a real pain, and, you know, if you got a, a drill press or something, it might be worth it, but it would have been so much faster to just clean it up and weld the rebar scraps in, or to get more bed frame, and uh, they'd also be a lot more useful if they were another couple feet long or even just another foot long. The length was kind of down to the amount of bed frame I had. Again, more bed frame would have helped. So yeah, if you're gonna make a set of these, get more bed frame, or <laughs> if you're buying proper materials to do this, then just buy more materials than I had to work with. And then, yeah, they should work. So, do they work as well as the $150 to $200 a set ones? I don't know, I haven't tried those ones. I assume they don't, but they also didn't cost me between $150 and $200, so I think I did pretty well here. Oh, stop being on fire. Where's your good bunny rabbit? 